characters, character profiles, and characteristics. In this video, I'll quickly be going over the different uh, characteristics, the different stats that all characters in Guilders are using. Player characters, NPCs like civilians or guards all share the same uh, character profile, but have various stats. For the example in this video, we'll be looking at the Thief, which is a standard uh, Gilder for the players. Uh, yeah. He's in the low end of uh, capabilities, fairly cheap, and should be a mainstay in all guilds. The first uh, characteristic is the uh, move stat. Move uh, is measured in inches. And most characters have a movement stat of 4 inches. Then we have the fairly agile uh, characters, like a thief, has a movement stat of uh, 5 inches. And uh, very agile characters like acrobats um, and street urchins will have a movement characteristic of 6 inches. The, the city guard all have 4 inches of movement, so a regular Gilda using both his actions would be able to keep his distance from the guards where thieves and acrobats um, are able to gain distance on guards trying to evade them during the heist. Some items will uh, add a negative modifier to movement if you are a heavily armored character uh, wearing plate mail or other kind of... Uh, fully covering metal arm. Next up is the fight stat. The fight stat is used in uh, melee combat where two characters are fighting each other uh, close up. Yeah. It's uh, The test is often a d10 opposed roll and then you add your fight stat or modifiers from your gear. A 3 is pretty standard. A two would be below average for apothecaries, priests, street urchins, uh, and a higher fight stat is for specialist melee uh, fighters. The fight stat is used if you want to uh, defend yourself and uh, fight back in a fight situation, and is also used for um, taking damage when people are using a shooting attack at you. You are able to uh, take it on your fight stat if it's a proper fighter or trying to dodge it with the agility stat. The next stat we'll cover is range. It's used for uh, both ranged attacks, shooting a bow or a crossbow or a pistol, but also for lobbing grenades, uh, hitting your target with a grappling hook or a uh, grappling launcher, and you're using the range stat for spotting hidden characters as well. So anything over a distance, it's using the range stat. So a character who is really good at uh, hitting something with a ranged weapon will also be good at spotting characters that is uh, hidden on the... Strength stat is used to determine how many items a character can carry and how much loot they're able to carry off the board. So the strength stat is really important and the average strength stat in Gilders is 3. So a thief would be able to carry with them a dagger, a small weapon, a sling, uh, a bit of utility and then have room for a single piece of loot to carry off the board. So the maximum items carried, including loot, would be three for a standard thief. Characters are allowed to, to stash or drop their items during the game without losing them on their profile. So say a, a thief is having a good day, picking a lot of loot, they're able to stash their dagger or their leather armor, leave it on the board to carry off their loot and they will gain their item back at the end of the strength stat, the bigger a modifier for the role trying to break down a door or a locked window. 
the agility stat is pretty important in a game like Gilders that's about thieves. The agility stat is the stat used for picking locks, uh, picking the pocket of a civilian. It's also used for some uh, for dodging. So if you're engaged in a melee fight and you don't want to fight, you're able to make a dodge roll instead. People dodging won't cause a lot of alarm for the gods. So the gods will ignore uh, ones just trying to get away from a fight. Use when dodging a shooting attack. Say you don't just want to take the hit on your armor, you try to roll a dodge roll. A higher agility stat will make it easier for you to make a proper dodge. The savvy skill is a catch-all term for being streetwise. Uh, how much do you know about living life in the gutters, in the underbelly? And it's used for a lot of different things, especially in the after gameplay. A leader with a high savvy stat will have a higher chance of getting the initiative in each round during the game. Uh, savvy is used for some spells and prayers. And then especially in all the RPG elements after the game, there can be a lot of instances um, a lot of situation where having a high savvy stat will be very good for a character in certain situations. Last is the health stat. All character profiles except to the uh, enforcer, that's the second in command, and the guild master themselves start with only two, uh, one health. Uh, this means the first time the character takes damage, they're out of the game. Next thing on the profile and all the uh, player profiles have this uh, listed is how much do they hire? Uh, how much does it cost to hire them uh, in the first, uh, when you're first making a, a guild? And next up is how much do you have to pay in upkeep uh, after a campaign game? All characters in the guild must pay their upkeep after each game uh, for lodgings and food. Uh, Better characters have a higher upkeep. Beneath the character profiles are listed their skills, if they're starting with skills. When buying a thief, they would have a lockpick one or pickpocket one, so you have to choose which, uh, which ability do they have when first starting. And then we have the skill groups. All skills in Gilders are listed into different groups and characters are not able to pick skills freely. So some of the more expensive character types will have uh, the option of choosing skills from a wide uh, variety of uh, skill groups where a thief will have to choose a specialization from their first level up, only being able to gain further skills from from that group of uh, skills. All characters in Gilders have the same profile setup, but various stats depending on what kind of character. They're all based around various archetypes or something that you would typically see in any kind of fantasy thief related uh, story. We have the acrobat. Fairly expensive, is good at climbing, is good at jumping from building to building, uh, starts very fast, which is a very valuable thing to be able to do. Not a good fighter, uh, below average strength, high agility. So these can become very good thieves with a bit of training. We have the alchemists, super expensive, um, decent all round stat line, have a high savvy for those uh, special uh, situations and starts with the ability to brew potions off game that the guild can use uh, during the games and uh, is a bit of a doctor offering extra roles during campaign play when characters get uh, damaged or injured. There's the bard who has special abilities to do uh, songs 
that can uh, do uh, special uh, tweaks to our characters during the game and are able to distract the guards or other players on the board. The brawler, melee fighter, not meant for uh, weapons fighting but for boxing, unarmed combat perhaps. The brood, a very strong character, not as good in a fight as the uh, brawler but has a lot of strength so you could also use it as a pack mule for your for your guild. We have the charlatan, carnival illusionist, a uh, hedged mage. Don't think of a wizard like uh, in a high fantasy setting that's all powerful. These are they are charlatans. They have small parlor tricks that can be really nifty for a guild in a tight situation. But there are no fireballs or the like in uh, guilders. Courtesans, fairly low stat line. Uh, above a thief in hiring cost but start with a unique skill work the streets that's able to bring in a lot of extra gold for your guild during the uh, during the heist so if you have a bad heist and you don't get off with a lot of loot if you have a courtesan in the guild you'll still be able to make a decent amount of money cutthroats an assassin starts with the sneak and backstab skills so they are better at hiding in the shadows they can move farther while hiding in shadows and they gain a bonus to their fight stat when they attack from a uh, hidden status. Eagle Eyes, they're good ranged uh, fighters and good at spotting hidden enemies. So they're a good character to, to have to have an overview over the city to avoid anything sneaking up on you. The Enforcer is one of the most expensive guys you can have in your guild 150 go uh, gilded coins is the same as uh, three thieves but they do come with two health a high fight stat a high range stat and is meant to be that second in command of their of the guild there's no obligation or it's not a must have to to bring an enforcer but it is uh, it can be a a great fighter to have if you want some more brute force in the guild especially as they're able to take a uh, punch. Scum, a super cheap, no skills whatsoever. Uh, it's pure muscle and cheap to throw away. Scum are special uh, in the game in the regard that if you have a bad game, you will always be able to field a full 10-man guild for your next game, even if most of your characters are in the infirmary or in jail. You can always find free scum for that one heist and if they do good and gain a lot of xp you can hire them after the heist or you can simply pay their upkeep and let them go but you will always be able to feel a full 10 man roster in uh, guilders of latin shadows and their stats uh, really do show that next up is the shadow priest a priest for the shadowy god the god of thieves the god of the low lives like a uh, charlatan, they have a special kind of magic called Shadow Divinity. So they're expensive, they're ex their upkeep is expensive, but they can bring some really cool tricks to the table for certain situations. The sharpshooter is like an assassin, but with a bow and arrow, a crossbow, or a uh, black powder weapon. Starts with a skill called Sniper, offering them a huge bonus if they uh, are hidden and making a shooting attack. Then we have the street urchins, super bad stat line. They're children from the streets. They're very cheap, they have a low upkeep, but they do have some cool abilities, making them, unless they are wanted for a crime, the guards will ignore them. Even when there's a lot of trouble in town and guards starting to be aggressive against all guilders they see, they ignore the street urchin unless they are carrying a uh, uh, arms full of uh, stolen loot so they are good to have in reserve for picking up an objective in the last part of the game and you're also able to feel two kits uh, counting only as one so a starting guild feeling uh, two kits two street urchins will be able to to still count as a 10-man roster though they are putting 11 miniatures to the board they're insanely bad in a fight 
they're bad at ranged combat, they can only carry one piece of loot, but it's still a pretty certain piece of loot to take out from the game. And then we have the Thief, as we, we've already covered, uh, and the Tinkerer. The Tinkerer is a craftsman, and they can, uh, after the games, make tools for the guilds like lockpicks, scissors, rope ladders, whetstones, and items that can be sold for a cheap little penny, or they're able to give a, a one-time bonus to certain uh, dice rolls during heist. So, that covers the characteristics and the character profiles in Gilders Life in Shadows and what the different kinds of stat does for a character and in the game. Thanks for watching and until next time, have a nice day.